Hello everyone, thanks for clicking into this video. This is Kai 23. I'm Bei Yan Cao from the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. Today I'm going to present our work, Sparkling Silence, Practices and Challenges of Live Streaming Among Deaf or Hard of Hearing, which is the HH streamers. So if you have any further questions regarding our paper, Please, please feel, free, feel free to contact me via this email, beiyan.cao at connect.ust.hk. Let's start with the introduction. We know that the online live streaming is a very booming industry in countries like the US and China. However, previous work investigated the experience of streamers with uh, enabled bodied or embodied streamers. Few research search have done about the disability streamers. So we think that it's critical to know how the deaf or hard of hearing streamer, which is DHS streamers, live streaming motivation, practices, and challenges. And also they are having a lot of impact in today's online booming live streaming industry. They have a lot of uh, live stream content such as e-commerce, dancing, playing video games, chatting, or even working. To conduct our, our research, we first recruit participants by distributing posters with our content information on Xiaohongshu, which is a social media sharing platform that has gained high popularity in China in recent years, and also by Snowball Sampling. We also collect basic information from the DHS streamers, such as their age, gender, and DHS condition by survey. And finally, we conduct a semi struck interview. We have 15 participants, five of them up to a live stream the interview on Kuaishou, which is a popular live stream platform in China with the assistance of an sign language interpreter. 10 participants were interviewed via online text messages on WeChat. This is a live recording clip of an interview. The participant told the researcher her unpleasant co-performing experience with a hearing streamer and the streamer was asking the following question. So you can see that we actually have 15 of the participants aged from 20 to 40 with lots of platforms in the use such as Kuaishou, Tencent Meeting, Bilibili, WeChat Group Live, and so on. Their live streaming history range from one week to four years and also have a lot of live streaming content such as education, dance, dance or sound language songs, free chat, e-commerce, game, and even magic tricks. If you have interest regarding their further information, please feel free to look into our paper. So because of the time limitation, we only share our two most interesting part of our paper. The first one is the, how we discover the DHS streamer's ways of communication. We discovered that an interesting and important finding was the ways of interaction with viewers strongly determined and predetermined by the viewer's characteristic. We find that some DHS streamers use sign language only. When sign language was strongly employed during live streaming, almost all viewers were DHS viewers. Some and more also, actually many of our participants use sign languages with other assisted communication ways, such as text writing on a writing pad, text display on the screen, and even lip reading of spoken languages. We discovered that text-based communication attract more viewers, most of whom were not DHH. And some of our DHH streamers, they use written language only. So we found that a text-based interaction with the viewers had the cost of losing DHH viewers. The second part is that they love to 
co-perform. The co-performance is also one of the very important part of their live streaming experiences. The first way is PK. There have two co-performance. The first one is PK. A live stream streamer can PK with a specific streamer, or this platform could randomly assign one streamer who has who was online to be connected, but however, no more than two streamers and two minutes for one PK. For Lian Mai, it's a more flexible form of co-performance, allowing multiple streamers to be connected. You have no time limitation in participants. The left one is the clip of PK. Yeah, when you have more gifts and more fans, give you virtual gifts, um, your color bar below you will become longer. And the right one is the key of the mic. You see that it has more people and support longer lasting time. So we actually have discovered some challenges they face. The first one is the technical, technical challenge with no captions and small or low quality image. The second one is the interaction challenge, such as they have facing difficulties in multitasking and sign language diversity, which is a very interesting question that is specific in China. The rigid specific feature of the natural sign language in China was noted in many interviews and also the fixed viewer group. The third one is the content moderation challenge, the internet travel limiting question, uh, difficulty and also the question lack of sign language moderators. The fourth one is that they actually face quite a lot of social distrust and discrimination. There are more detail about our interview regarding these questions and also regarding these challenges. If you are interested, and you want more details, please feel free to look into our paper. So regarding these four challenges, we have some discussion. The first one is to the design to facilitate DHS streamers communication with audience. Size of live streaming windows need to be adjusted, and also we have to improve more video quality. The most interesting part is the test communication because the test communication is a very important medium to bridge communication. The sound language recognition in China remains to be a very serious challenge because the use, use of region-specific natural sound language is widespread among Chinese DHH groups. And there are a few corresponding data sets for training effective sound language recognition model. And also we have designed for inclusive identity management because our participants suspect that viewers out of their community regarded them to be fake DHH people and even reported them to the platform. The live streaming platforms should develop a verification process to certificate people who are disabled if they apply. For the travel limiting issue, some part of, of our participants reported the experience have having no new viewers or subscribers to visit them for a very long time. They suspect that their accounts were reported by viewers with strong discrimination and distrust towards their church group. And also, they have this, we have some kind of design regarding the church group's early and active involvement. Because I think we think it's essential to conduct usability tests and empirical studies with the inclusion of DHH users. And also we were looking forward to a future live stream app that includes DHH users in its development from the beginning. For the conclusion, this is our work is a qualitative study to have a rich and insightful picture of DHH streamers' motivation, practices, and challenges on multiple live stream platforms. We also offer some suggestions to improve the accessibility of live streaming platforms in areas of identity management, user interface, interaction windows, sound language recognition, and translation. This study shed light into how DHH people embrace the new opportunity brought by live stream. Thank you for listening. If you have further questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. I'm Beiyan Cao. The below is my email, beiyan.cao at connect.ust.hk. Thank you.